Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of Grace. All of our music for this Mass can be found in your brown Catholic community hymnal. Just one announcement, the parish office will be closed this Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for training. Again, it's closed on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, and we uh, apologize if that causes any inconvenience for anyone. Um, our celebrant for this Mass is Father Tringese. Please join in singing hymn number 292, the Canticle of the Sun, number 292. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And My brothers and sisters, we gather on this Sunday in the 16th, 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Lord reminds us today of our need for Him and how He sees clearly into our lives and knows truly what we need. For those times that we failed to trust in God, for those times that we have chosen sinful ways, let us now ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word and in sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from, from Balishia, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were called, also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test Philip because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the signs he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off and make him their king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
I am very recently retired. You'll know that because I smile a lot more often than I used to. <laughs> I retired about one month ago. At that time, I was the pastor of St. John the Evangelist Church in Uniontown, which was also my home parish. A few weeks before I was to depart, Bishop Malesic came to celebrate a Sunday Mass there. He made a number of interesting remarks throughout that liturgy, but the one that kind of stuck in my mind was he began to explain to the people of St. John's that things were going to have to change in Uniontown because two of us were retiring that, this year. And so he said to them, I may not be able to give you what you want, but I will give you what you need. There's a very important distinction between the meaning of those two words. There are many things throughout our lives that we want, and if we look back on our past, no matter how young or old we might be, we sometimes see that some of the things that we wanted were not necessarily good for us, or they were unable to be attained. But there are certain needs that are very basic to our lives that we have to be in touch with to be able to understand ourselves. On the other hand, no one knows that better than God himself. What we need in opposition to many times what we want. That framework, I think, is a good way of beginning an understanding of this Gospel of John that we have today. We begin the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. It is a chapter we're going to have broken into segments over the next few Sundays because Jesus is trying to lead the people to whom he's speaking into an understanding of what they truly need in this life to have eternal life with him and his Father and Spirit after they die. What we see in this reading today, which is the beginning of this story, he sees this large crowd of people who have come to hear him. It says they came because he was performing signs for the sick. People were beginning to see what it was they could get from Jesus, that he was doing things that other people of his day could not do. And they didn't want to lose that. And then he feeds them. He's feeding them for one reason, and it was a different reason that they had as an understanding. They saw this as simply having their hunger satisfied. He saw this as the beginning of an understanding he was trying to lead them to as we will see in the weeks to come, to an understanding of the Eucharist and what our deep need for Jesus Christ himself is in our lives. So already we have people operating on two different levels. The people were responding to what they wanted. He was responding to what their true needs were. The same is true, I think, in our own lives. We don't always make that distinction. We live basically in a country where there are more things available to us than probably anywhere else in the world. So what we want is very often satisfied by the choices that we make and the selections that we make. But as we grow older, we know that we constantly are looking for something else or something more. That's a want because wants satisfy us maybe only for a while. Needs are a different story. Sometimes what we ask for from God is not given to us, and we don't know what to do when that occurs. I had an experience myself like that about 11 years ago. My sister, who was five years younger than I am, contracted pancreatic cancer. It was too late to do anything. Being a priest, being someone who believed, I was hoping and praying for a miracle. She had two children, one of whom was a senior in high school, one who was one year 
out of high school and had graduated, it just didn't seem an opportune time for any of that to take place. She handled it better than any of us in the family did. She came to grips with it. She came to an understanding of wants and needs in her own life, and she trusted up to the very begin, very end rather of her life. She asked me to look after her two kids. She knew that we had a good relationship. My sister and I were kind of soulmates from the time she was born. I was struggling with what I personally was losing until I got to a point where I began to realize I could not ask of her what was impossible for her to give, that her remaining alive was only going to be suffering and pain for her. And so I had to learn how to accept that death as difficult as it was. I did not get what I wanted, but I did get what I needed in terms of how to walk through that life and that moment and what to do in the days that came after. At some point or another, we will all have experiences like that if we have not had them already. They can take many different forms in our lives, but the one thing to always remember is that faith does sustain us. It doesn't mean it comes out the way we want. It means that many times things do not happen in a way we had anticipated. So we ask the Lord to help us as we go through these next few weeks of understanding these readings from John, that we know that the Lord looks at us and knows us better than we know ourselves. In his love, he always gives us the mercy that we need after we have sinned. He gives us the strength that we need when something demands courage in order to make it happen. And he strengthens the faith that he first gave us on the day we were baptized. That as we walk through this life, we know that he is always there, holding us up at weak times and celebrating with us those moments of joy. One Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from me, unsubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made. Christ, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the with the Father and the Son, the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the God of miracles and blessings, we place before him now the needs that we have. Our response will be, hear us, O Lord. For Pope Francis, may his example as a gentle shepherd inspire us, his flock, to share our blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. For world leaders, may God bless them in their efforts to eliminate the scourge of hunger from the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, hear us, O Lord. For farmers, bakers, and all who provide the food for our tables, may they know our thanks, and may they experience God's blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those in our community who will go to bed hungry, through the generosity and compassion of others, may relief soon be theirs in abundance. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who put themselves in harm's way to protect, defend, and rescue those in need, may God keep them safe as they carry out their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the parishioners of Our Lady of Grace and St. Benedict parishes, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Most loving God, you provide us with all good things. Hear our prayer and help us to reflect your love by sharing what we have with others. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we present our gifts and prepare the table, please join in singing hymn number 445, We Come to Your Feast, number 445.
Brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, these offerings, which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace with each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit for us salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the first time I've celebrated Mass in this church. About 300 years ago, I had Mass in the old church when I was teaching at Central. I subbed for someone that week, and it's been a very nice experience being here, and I compliment you on the way you celebrate liturgy. So uh, the Gallup poll will, will be out. Uh, Father, if you want me to come back, tell Father Dan 
Even if you don't, tell Father Dan, okay? <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Please join us singing in our closing hymn number 292, the canticle of the sun beginning with verse number four.